Hey guys, it's Cmac here. Uh, I'm glad that you're watching this video because we're going to talk about Linux operating system today. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of you guys uh, use Windows on a daily basis for your projects at work uh, or at home uh, because it's a very common operating system. Uh, you know, it's been there for a long time and it probably will be there for another you know decade or decades probably. Uh, but I want to walk you through uh, why Linux is so important and as a software developer you should be really comfortable with working with it. Um, and there's a reason all major companies you know, and awesome products, they rely on uh, Linux. First of all, Linux is free and open source. Uh, let's take a look at this. So you don't pay for Linux, you can just go ahead and download Linux and you know, uh, start working with it. Uh, however, you know, for Windows, you know, you go and pay for the operating system and everything in the, it, basically, it's in the black box. You're buying a black box. You cannot take a look at the source code. On the other hand, in Linux, you can actually take a look at the uh, code that basically handles everything in Linux. Under the hood, uh, you can see what's going on. And this is a very important fact, and I'll tell you why. Uh, imagine we build a system, right, together. You write a code, I write a code. Uh, you put it in a black box, I put it in a black box. I don't know what's going on uh, you know, inside your uh, system. You don't know what's going on on my side. Well, that's not necessarily a good thing because uh, we don't get a chance to share knowledge. When we don't share knowledge, basically we might be reinventing the same thing as well, right? If that makes sense. Uh, in Linux, Everything is open. A lot of programmers, a lot of awesome, great minds, bright minds, they can take a look at the code. If they see any security flaw, any problem, they can basically report it or they can get it fixed. So Linux core is growing on a daily basis and it's becoming more reliable and reliable, which is a one major feature, one major you know thing in Linux. And that's why it's so popular, reliability. So from being open source, to reliability, think about it. Uh, on the other side, you have Windows, which is a you know closed project. Uh, only Microsoft has access to the source code, right? Uh, nobody can take a look at it. And of course, if something bad happens, if something is missing, uh, you have to wait for Microsoft to release a patch or someone take a look at it. Uh, this is not the case in uh, with Linux because in Linux, a lot of people are looking at the code and can basically contribute to this open source project. And of course, it's free. We talked about that. A lot of companies in Linux uh, area, they make money by providing professional services uh, uh, for Linux, for companies you know, who use uh, Linux. Um, if you look at around uh, your you know, environment, if you look at the environment, you will find a lot of systems that rely on Linux. Uh, like TV, like satellites, uh, I don't know, maybe elevator, maybe your car. Uh, because Linux is, you know, very well designed, very well architected. And as far as, you know, running on different hardware, you can run Linux on really, you know, uh, limited resources hardware like uh, Raspberry Pi, right? You can have, uh, for example, uh, what you call it, Debian for uh, for Linux, and which is a lightweight uh, Linux for for Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that being said, having different distros in Linux is is a major uh, advantage. Um, for example, if you are security uh, developer or if you are working on security of applications and networks, so you you can use a, a specific version. Of Linux called Kali Linux, which it comes with around 300 and something, you know, uh, security tools uh, that they're built into that uh, distro, and it's being supported and it's being, you know, uh, promoted by, uh, you know, uh, I think offensive security, and then you know they maintain that and they give you a lot of things uh, to work with if you are, you know, security specialist. So that those all those distros, they all have you know different 
advantages for you know specific cases, which uh, we don't have that in in Windows world. In Windows, you have Windows Server and you know the, the just the like Windows normal Windows as a client. So being open source, which results in more security, because a lot of people take a look at the code, they can see the uh, security holes, they can see the flaws, and they can fix it by offering the right solution. But they have opportunity to, to look at that code, to review it. That's an important fact that you don't have in Windows. Um, we talked about security. One major piece in security that we have to you know, uh, be aware of, it's privacy. So in Windows, uh, when you install Windows, basically you acknowledge that you agree with all the terms and conditions that Microsoft provides. And uh, in those privacy terms, you are basically allowing Microsoft to collect a lot of data, uh, you know, from your computer. Uh, but in Linux, this doesn't exist. So nobody's pretty much collecting anything from your computer. And of course, you can limit a lot of things on Linux. You have a lot of power in Linux. You can open up your terminal and close everything, right? Make your Linux super secure and, uh, you know, harden it, basically, uh, Linux, which, again, is not the case in, in Microsoft. Uh, you might, <clears throat> you know, have a good understanding about, let's say, uh, hashes and, you know, password dumping and, I don't know, Microsoft uh, Windows. Uh, but it's all in the back box. Again, there might be another thing that you're not aware of and you cannot, you know, uh, basically anticipate the, the uh, consequences. So we talked about reliability, which, of course, Linux offers a lot of reliability. For example, when you install uh, something new on Linux, uh, you don't have to restart the machine. You can just, uh, for example, restart the service, that specific service. And installing and updating the operating system, it's, it's so easy. So uh, with one command line, uh, you know, one command, you can update the entire system. Uh, on the other side, in Windows, you definitely, you know, need to reboot the system, wait to download it. It goes through, you know, round of updates. Hopefully, they all go through. It won't get stuck. It says undoing changes, undoing changes all the time. So these are the things that... Uh, you won't see in, in Linux, and of course, it results in more reliable platform to run your code, to run your platform through all the so software. Remember, the ultimate goal uh, to have all those, you know, uh, to use operating systems to, is to run your code in a secure, reliable, and optimized environment. Linux can work on limited resources, right? If you have, uh, like, if you're running your code as an, uh, if you have an IoT project and you're running, uh, you know, your program that collects some, you know, temperature or, you know, uh, water level information and sends it to cloud, uh, you want to run, uh, you know, Linux on your Raspberry Pi. It's not possible to install Windows, right? So what I'm trying to say is uh, basically pretty much everything runs on, uh, you know, runs on Linux. And, uh, that's why it's so important for you uh, as a software developer to be comfortable and uh, learn more about Linux. So I recommend you start with uh, a distro, you know, the, a popular one like Ubuntu, since there's a lot of forums and documents you can read around Ubuntu. A lot of people are familiar with that. Uh, at the same time, of course, you can have your Windows. You can still, you know, continue working with Windows, but uh, you want to put enough resources and time to you know, learn more about Linux because uh, you know it's just it's just a better operating system for programmers. Uh, I will have a video uh, next time for uh, for twenty commands that will get you started. As soon, you know, within like I don't know half an hour, uh, once you practice practice them a little bit, you'll get comfortable with Linux environment and you can just start using it. So. You might have this question that how do how do I install Linux or should I go buy a new machine? Should I uh, what should I do? No, uh, there's definitely a way to run Linux on your Windows machine. Just go and download VirtualBox. It's a software. Google it, VirtualBox. Download it for Mac or Windows. Right. Once you have it installed, then go ahead and download Ubuntu's image, I ISO image, right, and then you can just import it as a virtual machine 
on VirtualBox. So VirtualBox basically will be able to run Linux on top of your operating system. So you don't have to buy a separate uh, hardware or different equipment or anything like that. Uh, well, let's review once more. Linux is free. Linux is open source. It's secure. Uh, it provides you know privacy. It has a lot of distribution. It's everywhere, every single device. It can run on limited resources like Raspberry Pi or similar devices. Uh, Linux is reliable. Installation, maintenance, updating it, it's super simple. So you don't want to miss it out and uh, definitely go ahead and download it. In the next video, uh, I'll be walking you through major main commands that you need just to get started. You don't have to spend hours and hours reading documents. Just follow this instruction that I'm about to give you and I guarantee you, uh, you'll be comfortable working with Linux and that will be one of your best decisions you ever made. All right, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and leave comments below. See you next time. Bye.